<laughs> okay. I am so excited about this painting. Some of you that were on the very beginning saw that I'm wearing my lucky I did rod sweatshirt with the Northern Lights and the Alaska dog on it. For 15 years, I have followed the Alaska I did rod. It started, um, it just finished this morning at 22 minutes after midnight. The last of 36 mushers came in off an 848 mile trail uh, to the interior of Alaska and back to Anchorage. So I'm really excited because this is, is in honor of the, this is my little, me and Wendy's little uh, uh, honor to the Iditarod <laughs> and the mushers. Um, so to get started, I tape my edges because I, I like the way it looks when you peel it off and that's an aha moment. We are going to start, if you have a hair blow dryer, that would be good to have it plugged in because at some point we need to do it. We need to dry our paint quickly. Um, we are going to just talk a little bit about the Northern Lights because you can see from the paintings, they look very unusual, almost sci-fi that you would see these kind of colors in a night sky. But I have a video that Wendy is gonna play for you. It's about three minutes long. So this is like your, your history part of the, of the lesson, the science part of the lesson. I want you to watch the video and I want you, it's a National Geographic uh, fast, what do they call it? Fast motion of the Northern Lights over the North Coast of Norway. And so I want you to watch it because this is what you're going to be painting tonight. So they flash and move across the night sky. Uh, sometimes they're in streams, sometimes they're in what's called curtains, which is uh, the painting here. These would be the streams. These are the curtains, when it looks just like a movie curtain that's swaying. And so that, it, by, I think by watching this little video, it will give you an idea of what they look like in nature. So that then when you're, when we're painting them tonight, you will have some kind of a background knowledge of them. So I'll turn it over to Wendy to play that little video, share her screen. It's just music, yeah. It, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'm going to kind of talk. Can I talk over the video or am I muted? Okay. I'm going to just kind of talk over the video while it's going. So what makes the northern light? First of all, there's northern and southern light. In the north, it's called the Aurora Borealis. In the south, it's called the Aurora Australia. And what the lights are created from, they're actually collisions between electronically charged particles from the sun. So the, the atmosphere around the sun is billions of billions of uh, degrees centigrade. And there are these electronic atoms that are constantly in collision. And sometimes they actually collide so much around the sun that they break through the magnetic field around the sun. And when they do, they're caught on what's called the solar wind, which is the wind that comes from the sun to the earth. And they make their way to the earth and they come through on the bank. The lights are seen over the magnetic pole from the earth, from the north and south pole. And what you're seeing when you see the color is the collision of these electronic molecules that have traveled all the way from the sun colliding with oxygen, usually oxygen, about 60 miles off of the, of the Earth's surface. You can imagine 60 miles up off of the Earth where the oxygen collides with these um, particles and, create, and creates these beautiful lights. The 
Cones are usually the lime green to yellow to white. Um, pink is also a common one. The color changes because of the different gases that the particles from the sun collide with. So if it has more nitrogen, then it's going to have a different color. The oxygen is the one that gives the lime in the color. And the light, as you see them moving across, the, moving in the sky, that can range from 100 to 400 miles. So, I mean, they are just, they are just such a miracle. And I was born and raised in a, on a farm in western Montana, and I've had the opportunity twice in my lifetime to see the northern lights. Once when we were camping up in the, up in the mountain, and once when, I'll never forget, when I was 12, my sister and I were sleeping out in the front yard. And right out, like when you laid in our front yard and looked up in the sky, you saw the Big Dipper. And it was late at night, and all of a sudden these, these lights just started flickering and moving across the sky, and it was just awesome. Yeah, so we'll get ready to get started now. So you have two different colors of blue. So one is called phyllo blue, which is a, a darker, brighter blue, and one is cerulean blue. Can I show on that? Cerulean blue. We are going to mix the cerulean blue with the yellow and the green that we have to make our turquoise color. So you could set those aside. First, we're going to paint the whole background. Okay. So with your palette knife, you're going to put drops of paint down the middle of your canvas. If you've painted with me before, this is kind of something we do a lot. So I'm going to start by putting a little black at the top. So my paint colors coming, coming down from the top of my canvas are going to be black, phyllo blue, white, magenta, white. So that's our pattern. And you can see by the um, samples there, we want to focus on the lights. So we're going to bring the top part of our sky down about two thirds of the way on our canvas. So I'm putting my phyllo blue. I'm wiping my palette knife each time so I don't mix my colors. Then I'm gonna put in some white and a touch of magenta. And then I'm going to add more white. Okay, so your canvas should have five, five little globs of paint on it. Black, phyllo blue, white, magenta, white. And then you're going to use your one inch brush or a thick brush that you have. Somebody's asking if that is showing what you're doing on this canvas. And so would you just mention once again that in the galaxy tab S6? Okay, if you if you look at the picture that has that is noted as Galaxy Tab S6, you can pin that picture. That's the that's me painting. Yeah. So we're always learning something new. So I have learned that if you take your brush. Dip it in your water and squeegee it out on the edge. Where am I at? On the edge of your deal. Just before we start, it will help with our blending just a little bit. We're not really adding water to our acrylic paint, but it'll help with our blending. So I'm going to start. I'm holding my brush like I would hold a pencil. And I'm holding it loosely so I can go back and forth. If you want to try that above the canvas, this is the motion you want horizontally across your canvas. And I'm going to start with the white and just start blending it, bring in the magenta. And I'm working my way up the canvas. And because acrylic paint dries so fast, usually, I want to add some more white. Because of course that magenta is a little too strong right now. So I wanna 
I want to tone it down a bit. And I'm taking my paint all the way out to the edges of my canvas. Okay, actually, I'm going to add more white because it's still. I have my magentas kind of a pale, pale pinkish now. So I'm going to just keep with that same stroke motion and start adding, start bringing in some of that um, phalo, phalo blue down, down into my picture. What we're looking for here, our focus for tonight on our painting is value. So what we're looking for is a soft change in value, a gradual change in value from the blue down to the, to the rose color. And then last, I'm going to add, I'm going to sweep across my black. The black is really powerful. So even if, even if you have a little bit of black, it will, it will darken that upper sky a lot. And I, let me see if I do this slow. So here I'm holding my brush like a pencil and I'm just, I'm flipping it as I go across. So I'm dragging it to the right this way, then I flip it over and bring it back the other way. I know I was doing that kind of fast for you. So my brush is just going across and back. So my, my hand is turning up and then turning down as I blend it across. Okay. So before I go down to adding to the bottom, I'm going to come back with my uh, palette knife and I'm going to add a little more um, blue and white here. Through this center part. I have enough for the red in there. So I've added a little bit more through my center part. Just I want to, I just want to brighten up that color a little bit there. When the blue and the magenta mix, you're, you should end up with a kind of a, a light lavender color. How's everybody doing? Remember to breathe. Don't hold your breath while you're painting. And remember, this is our background color, so it doesn't, you don't have to be perfect with this. We just want the value to, to just slightly change. Will you guys give Wendy a thumbs up when you're ready to move on? Please? Okay. So while you're working on that, let me tell you some of the legends of the of the uh, Northern Lights because every the places to see the Northern Lights, of course, are 
where they see them really good is way up in the Yukon, Northern Territories of Canada, uh, very northern part of Greenland, um, Norway. The, the southern, uh, the Aurora Australis is seen, of course, around the Antarctic. But there are many cultures who, who have myths about and legends about the lights. So um, let me just see. Uh, during the Middle Ages, the, the medieval times, the occurrence of the aurora was that it was going to bring bad luck. It was an omen for um, famines or war. The Maori in New Zealand, and along with a lot of the Northern European and North American um, people, believe that the lights were reflections from torches or fires. The um, Indian tribes of Wisconsin believe that the that the lights represented or were the showing where the giants who were the spirits of the great hunters and the fishermen lived. The Inuit Indians of Alaska believe that the lights were the spirits of animals that they hunted, the seal, the salmon, the deer, and the beluga whales. And other Aborigine people believe that the lights were the spirits of their deceased people, their deceased ancestors. So they've all had like um, legends about them. One thing that has been, the scientists have discovered is that the showing of the northern lights is is I don't know how you say it cyclic cycles it cycles through and it the the greatest um showing of the northern lights seem to appear every 11 year uh, 11 yeah every 11 years so guess what the last time that the, the northern lights were at their climax was 2013 so here we are in 2021. In 2024 would be the next cycle for the great showing of the Northern Lights. So kind of fun. It'd be in our lifetime when we recognize it and know it. So we're going to continue on now because in this part here, we're going to have our islands in the ocean there. And the bottom part of our painting is ocean. So we're going to we're going to reverse the way we put the paint on. So I'm going to start with white in the middle, um, a little, uh, just a tiny little touch of the pink of the magenta. Okay. Have to make sure that I add up all. Yes. And then some of our fellow blue. And end with a touch of black. We haven't even put any paint on our canvas or on our palette yet. We're just taking it straight out of it. If you're at home, you're doing it right out of the tube. You could just even squirt it on. Okay, and using that same horizontal stroking, we're now going to start with the white and the, and the magenta. Stroke that across your canvas. It's kind of blending as you go. And then bringing in your fallow blue. I, I know some of you joined last month for the Zentangle class. It, it's, it's very similar. When you're, when you're making repeated strokes, when you don't have to think about, you've got your color down there and you're not having to think about, oh, I got to put a different color on my brush, but you're just repeating your strokes. It is helping your mind to focus and it calms you because you're focusing on just repeating the stroke back and forth. And then I'm going to add in my black.
And we're just working on a nine by 12 canvas. So you can stroke your uh, colors right from one edge to the next. And again, you're wanting to make sure what you're what you're striving for is that gradual value change. So I have from the top, I have my dark blue into my magenta kind of rose, and then I'm just doing the reverse down here. If it if it looks like it's not quite right, then you could just add what color you think you're missing. Me, I want to have a little bit more white right here. Yeah, you want it. That's true. When you're when you're sweeping your paint across, you're you're pulling your paint across. So you shouldn't you shouldn't have. We've done paintings in the past where we wanted it to be thick. Um, we wanted the paint to be you know thick on your on your canvas. This one not so. And this is where once you get once you get your background done, you're done with your one inch brush so you can put it in your water so that, that paint doesn't dry in there before you're able to clean your brush. And we're going to the next step is going to be to create the light. So we want, you can touch with your hand and see if your, if your sky is dry. If it isn't, hit it with a blow dryer. If you don't have a blow dryer, you need to just stand up and fan it. So it'll, it will dry quickly. You can look at it, kind of tilt it in the light. If you see it shiny, then that means that's where it's still damp. Mine, Pretty much is dry. My bottom is it because I just finished it, but the top is. So while we're waiting for everybody to get their background done, you can start mixing on your palette. And your what you're what you're aiming for is a turquoise, a pretty turquoise color. So Now, you put a little cerulean blue on your canvas. Not on your canvas, cerulean blue on your palette. Take some of your green, which is fallow green, right? Yeah, it's fallow green. So it's already got a little, uh, of course it's got, it's, it's, leaning a little heavy on blue to begin with. And green, or I mean yellow, sorry, yellow. And a little white. So I've got four spots of paint on my, on my palette. I have my white, my chrome yellow, cerulean blue, and my fallow green. So before you even start to paint on your on your canvas, I want you to practice mixing these colors to see what you come up with. Okay, if I take a little white and mix it with my fallow green, Where I get a really pretty light well, greenish aqua color. We're trying to get caught up just on our background. Can you pause for just a minute? Okay. If I take my cerulean blue, mix it with a little green, 
I'm going to get a dark blue aqua. I can mix it with a little white. See what I come up with. I'm using my little, what are the half inch brush, quarter inch brush. If I take a little yellow, mix it with a little fallow green. Here's where I get my lemon yellow, lemon green, lime green color. If I take that and mix it with a little white, it's gonna be lighter, of course. So I want you to take your palette. Lori, can you see what those basic Take your palette and just in? practice a little bit and see what colors you come up with. Can you hear it? Lori? I hear somebody over here. Yeah, I was going to say, your volume might go. Lori, can you tell us what those base colors are again? We're just barely finishing our background. <laughs> so what? this is you're using your lighter blue, your cerulean blue. It looks kind of more like a sky blue. So... Sky blue, cerulean blue. This is the only green you have, the fallow green. And chrome yellow. And I got white on here. So I have four colors. I have a blue, a green, a yellow, and a white. And just practice on your palette, mixing them to see what colors, what colors you get when you mix the different ones. Right, this is what's going to give us our colliding atoms, our, our electrons and protons, the, and the gases. This is what's going to give us our vibrant, almost fluorescent colors. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm just... Like my ones here, I started with green. I added a little fallow green and a little of the chrome yellow. Got this color, added more yellow, more yellow. So I can just see what it's going to do, what it's, how it's going to change when I add more yellow. Um, they're up there. Mm-hmm. That's good. Spend a little time working on making colors. Yeah, I'll just keep talking to you while you're while you're practicing mixing. Um, so you have the two examples that I painted there. One is streaming, uh, uh, the, the aurora that's kind of in streams. One I tried to capture the curtains of the aurora, how they fold and flow like curtains. Um, I have a picture here I want to show you. So this is a, I gotta see how I do it. This is the real, a real picture of them. So you see that, you see that green, light aqua color that, that's in them? That's kind of what you're looking for, is you're looking for some of those, some of those colors. I think you all have the instructions that I typed up. Uh, we're on step six. So with our cerulean blue plus yellow plus white, small flat brush, our paint, our background paint is dry. We're gonna start to lay in some of our of our northern light colors. Yeah, uh, give a thumbs up to Wendy so so we know if you're if you're ready to to move on. <laughs> we love doing this, but oh, it's so hard when I'm not seeing what you're doing. <laughs> mm hmm. We are super. I hopefully. Before the fall, knock on wood, you might be able to do a paint night in person. But we're planning on when we do that, still um, doing it so that our friends get to take 
over Zoom can still join us. So we'll do it in person, but then we'll still set up the stuff so that we can broadcast it. Okay. So by the fall, we're hoping that we can paint in person. But even if we can, we still will uh, have it be on Zoom. So friends that we've made away from uh, the local area here will still be able to join us for our paint night. So I'm going to start with a darker green. Okay, I'm going to start with a cerulean blue and a yellow, and I'm going to put in a little bit of white. So blue, yellow, and a little white. And my paint is pretty dry and thick right now, so that's okay. Because to start our, if, if it makes you feel better, you can take a pencil and draw a horizon line where, you, where you're going to, I'm going to just eyeball it and say that my horizon line is going to be right here. Remember I said about two-thirds, two-thirds of the way. Actually, you can take a clean palette knife and just kind of scrape in a little line. Where your horizon line is going to be. So can you guys see, see that where I've scraped a little line? Give me an idea there. And I've got my first color made, which is my cerulean blue, yellow, and the white. And I've got it on my paintbrush, but I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to swipe it a couple of times on a dry paper towel. And I'm going to imagine, so you've watched the video, you've seen the, the um, reference photos. Here is the photo again that I showed you of it. So you decide if you're going to have streamers or if you're going to have a curtain, but you're going to start near your horizon line and with a light stroke. So I've said this too before. So I hold my, my paintbrush pretty, not in an angle like this, but tipped up. So it's, it's uh, perpendicular to my canvas. And I rest my little finger on my canvas for a balance. And I'm gonna sweep up here in the sky with some backwards C strokes. Again, I put the I put the paint on my brush and then I've wiped my brush off. So here is my color. The blue, the yellow, and a little white. And I've made my color here. I put it on both sides of my brush. I use my paper towel and I wipe it a couple of times. So it's kind of a dry brush thing. Okay. And after I've got a couple of little C's in here. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to use it on the edge on this part. And I'm going to make some little Z, little uh, sweeping back and forth strokes. I hope you're being able to see it. I'm using the we're going to go to lighter color in a little bit, but right now I'm using kind of a darker color. Again, I'm holding my brush perpendicular and resting my finger on my canvas so that my fingers can just make this kind of a sweeping, sweeping stroke. You saw the pictures. I mean, they're all different kinds. The, the Aurora. And I'm just going to work this way um, with just the different values that I have. So I did that one with the, the blue, the yellow, and the white. Um, I'm going to make some that are just yellow and white. 
Actually, because I didn't wash my brush off, I have a, a little of the blue in it, which is fine. I'm gonna wipe it on my paper towel. I really like the look of the curtain, the, the sample that I have of the curtain. So I'm gonna come up here with the end of my brush. So my, my fingers are, I'm using the tip of my brush. It's almost like you're making a uh, lightning bolt. Wendy, can you see that? Sorry, so they're asking for if I can share. I'm, I'm sharing the uh, your Google Doc instructions. Okay. I can. You can see the zig zigzag. So see, I made a, I made yellow. I didn't wash my brush off, so it already had a little of the blue in it. And I mixed yellow with white. And then I'm holding my brush perpendicular to my canvas and I'm making a cur this is going to be called the curtain but it looks kind of like a lightning bolt going up in the sky Now I am going to wash my brush just because my brush is getting so dry. Wipe it so it has a little bit of water in my bristles. So I'm swishing it in my water, scraping it off on the side. So my brush has a little bit of water, a little moisture in it. And now I'm going to mix. Remember, we're just using these values on the paper here, so, or on your palette. So I think I'll do. Um, Little of the green with a little of the blue. Maybe add a little bit more of the yellow. Okay, where I have my zigzag curtain going up here, now I'm going to take and I'm going to bring my lights up from the curtain. So they shoot up in the sky from the curtain. So I'm, I'm taking my colors from the curtain here and just streaking them up. And the last part I'm going to do is I'm going to take some white right, right along the curtain. And I'm using the end of my brush to give some, some lights that are streaming up into the sky.
How's everybody doing? Yeah, it's really it's really kind of random and I it, it will look amazing when you're done. It will look amazing when you're done. So you just you're just working with your colors. If you want to have one that's got a little bit more of a the thing is you've got a blue background right now. So the blues aren't going to show up so well as the as the light aqua greens are. Just mix it on your palette and see, hmm, that's a pretty color. I'd like to add that up in the sky. I am using my flat brush. I probably could try the angle one. Yeah, I think you can use either the angle one or the flat one. The idea is you're just doing it. It's just lightly touching your canvas. It's not like you're not painting a straight line, like putting it on your canvas and filling in a line. How's everybody doing? Thumbs up if you're if you're feel good about your about your lights. Or smile into the camera and so we know that you're feeling good about it. <laughs> Zero thumbs up. What the heck, you guys? Yeah. Yeah. I think you need to take a break. You need to take a breath. Everybody breathe in. There are no mistakes. Can I ask a question? You may ask away. So if when we made the zigzag line, we think it looks a little too, um, what, I don't know how to describe it, like so hard, like the line yeah. is too hard. Is there a way to soften that up? Yeah, mix that. Uh, Mix in a little bit darker color, a little more with the blue. And then paint over that area or? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if you, if you, um, let me see how that will work. If you get just a wet brush, not wet, so, so you've got water in your brush and you pat it off. You can go back and kind of scrub that a little bit and blend and blend a little bit of that harshness away. But really, it might look harsh to you, but um, they the curtains on the on the northern lights are really harsh. They look like um, I watched the. Uh, oh my gosh! What's the artist with the afro hair? Bob Ross. Okay. I watched Bob Ross. I watched a painting of him doing a painting of the Northern Lights. And he, of course, uses like three inch wide brushes and he and oils. So they're very mobile, mobile. And he painted in that curtain, just like a sharp zigzag line. And then using the brush and just grabbing that paint is what he streaked back and forth from it. So let me hold this up a little bit more because I, I really like how this sample turned out. Oh, so see how I, yeah, see how I have the zigzag right here. It's a pretty harsh line between the zigzag and the night sky behind it. Uh huh. But then you just mix the other turquoise oh, and yeah. green colors and sweep them up from that. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the light is just exploding into the sky. Oh yeah, thank you. Does anybody else have questions? You can unmute yourself and ask.
that is like Bob Ross because you can say, okay, well, I want a streak of light here. And I'm going to have another little streak of light there. <laughs> It is a little bit easier to see it with the angled brush. Oh, they're you know, moving around a lot. Yes. You guys might like to try your angled brush too. I kind of picked up my flat one because that's what I was working with, but you can try your angle brush. Wet it so it has a little water in the bristles. It will, um, it's just a little bit different. You can put the, the brush is cut off like at an angle so you can lay the point onto your canvas first and then streak it up. When you have your lights up here in the top, we are also going to add some reflections. So remember you kind of eyeballed or you drew with a pencil or somewhere in here you have your horizon line. So you're gonna imagine these lights are so bright that they're reflecting down here in this deep water, in this dark blue water. And it's gonna be a mirror reflection. So where your lights, my lights here are kind of starting in the middle and angling off to the top to the right. Down here, I'm going to mirror it. So I'm going to start kind of in the middle and I'm going to bring them down to the right, my colors. And they're going to be a lot fainter. Most of my colors are dried on my palette, so I have to mix another little bright lime green. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I mixed my green, so here's my green. There, can you see it? That's my, this is the only one that's wet right now on my palette. And I'm using my angle brush. And so then I take my paper towel and just slightly wipe off my brush, sweep it. And now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna make some lights in the water. I'm holding my brush kind of perpendicular and I'm placing my finger, my little finger on my canvas to give me a kind of a base to go from. And once you have some that are a little green in there, you can add some that are a little yellow with white. Just a little bit in the water. Uh, smile or hold up your thumb if you're ready to oh okay if you're ready to move on because we're now done with the done with the lights 
Do you have? I have so many, so many colors here on my paper plate, and now we're gonna we're going to splatter in some stars. So if you need to go grab a plastic lid or another palette, so you can have one that you can put white on with. And if you got a um, a uh, kit from us, you got brand new toothbrushes, but these are gonna become our splatter brushes because we, we use them in a variety of projects. So to do this, the stars with a clean palette knife, I'm gonna put some white on my uh, palette and I'm gonna dip my brush in the, my water and I'm gonna scrub it in the white. To splatter stars, you need them to be like ink, uh, to be fluid like ink. And once you have, it's just like what you don't want your kids to do to the mirror in the bathroom. Yeah. But once you have it, once you have a little watered down white in your brush, you're gonna angle it at your pitcher and just rub your thumb against your brush and put in some some stars and you're going to do this for the whole canvas the stars are going to reflect down in the water so go ahead and put some splattering in the in the water also i don't know how well you'll be able to see that can you see my canvas wendy can you see the white sprinkles okay so it makes it it makes it be kind of uh quite thin like quite fine little little stars but let me show you the here's a close-up of the reference one so we're going to take your tiny brush that you have and again with the white you're just going to pull out a few little spikes little star shimmers to make some of the stars look like they're shimmering a little more okay so look at your look at your uh, painting and just kind of if there's not a dot there already you can put a dot and with your very fine brush you're going to just pull out a little like make a little plus sign right through that dot to make a little star that's maybe a little brighter than the rest, that's shimmering a little bit more. And if you do a plus and you think it should shimmer more, then you can add another diagonal line to it. So we're just taking some of our little white splatterings and adding a little bit of star shimmer, call it just to, to make that uh, little star here and there to stick out. And when you're doing the shimmering, it doesn't have to be watered down, you can just the brush is so fine, it'll only pick up a tiny bit of paint anyway. Okay, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, four, five, maybe little star shimmering, bigger ones. And then wipe that off. Wash that brush off and dry it off. We're done with our toothbrushes so you can stick them in your water so they don't get too hard. Okay. So we're at the point now where we have the upper part of our sky. We've got our, we've got our northern lights 
moving and glistening in the sky. We got our stars shimmering. We've got a little bit of the lights reflecting down here in the in the water. Now we're going to go to our angled brush and black. So we're, I know that's a little, see what I mean? You had to, you had to mix these colors. It was a little more stressful because you were having to think about, oh, how much do I add of this color? How much do I add of that color? Now we're going to take a deep breath and we're going to use black. We don't have to worry about how much or anything. It's all black. <laughs> yep. And you're just going to get your, load up your, um, angle brush with your black. And come in here with black and your angle brush. Okay. 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 So you, you took your toothbrush, you uh, put a little water in your white on your palette. Where am I at? A little white on your palette with your toothbrush. Did it in your palette like this. And then with your thumb, you're gonna take and hold your canvas and you're splattering it. Just rubbing your thumb across the toothbrush will make the stars splatter. And you do that on your whole canvas, the sky and the water. And then with our tiny brush, with the very tiny brush and white, you come back in and you add a few little strokes, little plus sign through a few of those little star splatters to give that, uh, those stars a little bit more shimmer in your sky. Put some white on your brush with just a tiny bit of yellow and use the edge of your brush, like hold it up like this. So you're just using the bottom and make definite streaks like that. Mm -hmm. It's okay because look at. I mean, I like she was saying her sky, Wendy was saying her sky looks just like too green. But look at here's a here's a photograph, if I can get it right. Ah, photograph of the northern lights. So they can they can be they can be like a green cloud. Yes, but that looks so good from here. Yes, everything looks better. Everything will look better at arm's reach or farther. And everything will look better tomorrow morning when you look at it. You'll go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> and now we're just going with our angle brush and our black. And we're kind of drawing on that horizon line. And then with the black on my brush, I don't even need to scrape it off because I want kind of a lot of it. You're gonna draw in some of your mountains. So here's the sample again, closer up. Where am I at? There. Just gonna draw some triangle shapes of mountains and vary them a little bit. Um, I think it looks nice if they I think it looks nice if they come down and there's like a a low spot here that doesn't have the 
the mountains on it. So you have ones coming from the left and from the right. And you just paint them solid. So just like you were, you just draw a triangle and it's easy to draw, easier to draw with your angle brush. So here I've drawn, you see my mountains I've kind of drawn, everybody look up. Yeah. Take a deep breath and see how I've just kind of drawn the mountains on there. Then I'm going to go back with a lot of paint on my brush and just fill them in. So see that part of the sky that you were stressing about? Didn't matter because you covered it up. Mm -hmm. Right? So when you're doing the mountains, do one side and then the other. That will allow the first side that you did to dry a little before we put in the highlights. Okay, so I'll do it here to the other side. to see where the edge of my tape is. I know where the point's gonna show. So there I've drawn my right side. And now with my brush loaded with the black, I'm gonna just fill it in. This reminds me of, you know, exercising, even though I don't look like I exercise, I do. <laughs> and you know how one of my favorite kinds of exercise is circuit, circuit training or circuit exercises, where you, where you do something really fast for a while and then you, and then you stop. I used to go to a little gym that had a clock on the wall and every 30 seconds you change to a different machine. But in between, so you'd work really, really hard and then whew, it'd beep or it turned red and that meant you stop and then you'd go to the next machine. And then you had about a 20 second break and then it would turn green and you would go as hard as you can. So this filling in of the black with just painting black in here, that's your, that's your breathing time. That's your in between, ah, just put black on, just put, Yep, just put black on your brush and fill in the little triangle shapes of the mountains. So you're ready for the next the next high intensity workout here. <laughs> so I'm gonna call that good for mine. So you can see I've just added some some mountains on the left, kind of dipping down in the middle where my lights are kind of coming up more. You see more of my lights and to the mountain on the right. Once you get your mountain filled in with the black, wash your, wash your angled brush off in your water. And you need to have your mountains dry before we can highlight them. We are we are just about we are just about done. We are on step 12 of 15. Well, almost 14. 10, 12 of 14. So we need our mountains to be dry. So however you can dry them, either fan them or if you have your uh, if you have a hair blow dryer, they dry within seconds. You need a blow dryer, Wendy? Yeah. 
So actually, on this sample, I think I did better on the mountains than the than the second one. So I like the curtains on the that sample that I did, but I like the mountains better on this one. So I'll hold this up here so you can see it. Where am I at? This way. Okay. So I have my mountains here on the left. I have my mountains here on the right. So we're going to say our mountains have a face. So they're facing like it, our mountains are, they're not just triangle shapes. They're more pyramids, right? So we're going to say we have a face that's facing the light from the sky. The, the northern lights here are, are so brilliant that they're actually adding a glow onto the face of your uh, triangular prism here that you have for your for your um, mountain. So important thing with this that I've learned is that you are just going to, if you feel comfortable doing palette knife, palette knife actually works better than a paintbrush on this part. But you decide, I'm gonna keep this here so I can show. So I'm gonna take pretty much the last of my white here with my palette knife and scrape it off into my, onto my plate, my palette. And just like I had done for my Northern, right, Northern Lights palette, I want a little cerulean blue and yellow. Okay, so I'm going to highlight my mountains. Make sure your black, make sure your black mountains are dry, because we don't want the black to mix. Millie, is that you? I saw you stand up. There you are. He's one of my little homeschool art students on Wednesday morning. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take my palette knife, scrape a little white here. Mix in a little bit of yellow. I'm just mixing, I'm scraping and squishing with my palette knife. To get, to get a little of my turquoise color. And then I'm going to take my palette knife. I've got, so here's the top of my palette knife. Here's the bottom of my palette knife. See how I have my paint on the bottom? I can put my index finger on my palette knife. It's plastic, so I can I can bend it a little bit to add pressure. And remember, I'm working with a triangular prism. Is it? Am I saying it right? Triangular prism. And I'm just going to put some of this on that one face. Um, where can I get this? There. Can you see that? So I had I had mixed the color with my palette knife on my palette. It was on the back of my palette knife. I used my finger for pressure to bend my palette knife. See how I'm down bending it? And then I just, I don't want it to be solid. I just want to scrape a little highlight on that, on that. And even if it's not totally blended on your palette, you can still, I haven't totally blended it. I've just started to mix the colors. Where am I at? There. Now with the mountains on my right. So the mountains on my left, I highlighted the right side of them. Mountains on the right, I'm going to highlight the left side. So if you need to turn your palette or your canvas, so you can get in there with a little bit of highlight.
Oh. That showing up good for you guys. Does anybody have questions? Un unmute yourself and ask me so I know what you what you might need help with. Once I put a little of my, I would say darker value of the, the turquoise and the green, I'm going to wipe my palette knife off and just pick up white. So you can't see it because my palette knife is white. And that's gonna be my, my, a little bit of white on that. I'm kind of using the edge of my palette knife just to give a little bit more definition to the side of my mountain there. The face that's facing the, the Northern Lights. And I'll do the same thing on the left. Oh no, on the left side of my right mountain. So here's a little information on the, on the Iditarod. So the young man who won the Iditarod this year, his name was Dallas CV. Uh, he, this is, he has joined the ranks of, he's won five Iditarods. And he did it in, I got it pulled up on my phone. I have to tell you exactly, but it was seven days something. So they all start out with 14 dogs, usually, all of them. There was like 42 contestant or mushers this year. And some of them, they call it scratch if they decide to leave the trail. They're very, very good with their dogs. So if their dogs start showing any kind of stress, they will they will scratch at a checkpoint and be uh, uh, helicoptered back to, to uh, Anchorage. But they start off usually with 14 dogs. And then some of them get tired. Some of them, it's their first I did a rod, the dogs, you know, and stuff. I mean, just lots of things. And so throughout the throughout the Iditarod, they may call what they may drop a dog, which means they leave it at a checkpoint to be cared for. There's a vet at every checkpoint to be cared for and to meet up with them at the end of the trail. So Dallas started off with 14. He ended up with 10 dogs um, that finished the race. These dogs are amazing. I, I can't even remember. I think they eat seven, it's like 17,000, 14 or 17,000 calories a day and they burn at least that. They love to run. And they all wear booties on their feet. Little, they all have booties. Um, for several years, I followed a fourth grade teacher. I was teaching fourth grade at the time. I followed a fourth grade teacher from Sun Valley, Idaho, who um, he went up there to supported by the children in his class. Like all year they had been working on things. The kids had hand sewn all the booties for their for his dogs, and um, one of the last years I saw him do it, he uh, they actually built his sled, and he and he used the sled that he and his classmates had built for it, and it was so touching. It even makes me cry now. When he got to Nome, guess who was there to meet him? The parents and his fourth grade students. <laughs> they had flown up to meet him there. Anyway, it was amazing. I, I loved it. <laughs> but we're adding our little highlight on the mountains. I'm talking. You guys are painting here. I'll put this back. Um, the only thing we have left is to add a little shadow of, a, of the mountains in our water. So I'll let you keep going there with your with your mountains. It really it really makes them sparkle when you when you add white to the edge of your palette knife and just so when I laid on the green, when I laid on the green and the turquoise color with my palette knife, my palette knife was pretty much flat on my canvas and I just kind of stroked it across. When I add the white, I'm scooping it up and it's on one edge of my palette knife, just on one edge. So my palette knife is turned at about a 45 degree angle 
so I can lay that right on the edge of the mountain and just give it a quick little stroke and add that little white super highlight there on the edge. So I think you're still painting. So I'm gonna keep talking about the Iditarod. So here we are. CV had 10 dogs in harness when he glided across the finish line to win the Iditarod 49 title. And this is how precise they are, guys. Seven days, 14 hours, eight minutes, and 57 seconds. Of course, CV could not have made it the approximately 848 miles without his 14 dog race team consisting of, so here is his 14 dogs, uh, 10 of them finished the race. This is the 14 dogs. These are his dog names. Prophet, Gamble, Canton, Pecos, Swifter, Cobra, West, Viacon, North, Mustang, Yak, Rip, Frisbee, and Ace. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I just love it. So here, as the winner of the Iditarod 49, CV adds more accolades to his mushing career. CV became the youngest musher in history to run the Iditarod at 18 years old in 2005. In 2009, he won the most improved musher going from 41st place to sixth place in 2006. He won the Yukon Quest, which is another hundreds of miles of race that they ran up in the Yukon. Um, in 2011, became the youngest Iditarod champion in history in 2011. And with today's win, CV has 10 finishes in the top 10. So the idea rod is usually over 1,100 miles from Anchorage to Nome. I'm sure most of you know the story, right? Well, Disney made a movie, a couple of movies about it, but they had a terrible um, pol polio. Oh my gosh! Yeah, they needed serum out in Nome, and it was it was making it was killing several of the children and making them and really harming them. And so the only way they could get the serum was to buy dog sleds. So several do, several mushers took links of the trail from Nome to from Anchorage, from the train in Anchorage to, to where the train could stop to Nome to deliver the serum. And so that's why they run the, keep to keep mushing history, you know, alive and, and stuff. So also there is a musher whose name is Jesse Royer, Royer. R O Y E R. She's actually lived for quite a quite a while in my in my home area of Western Montana. I have friends that are good friends of hers. That um, uh, she's a mounted pistol shooter, gun shooter, <laughs> and she moved to Alaska to to raise her dogs and stuff. And she's she's awesome. She finished thirteenth this year. She's she's run for several years. Also, I always like following her. So I think everybody's pretty good with their mountains. We're going to take your flat brush, wet it in your cup so it's got a little bit of water on it, and just black. So you're going to pull up some black. But unlike when we painted our mountains where we wanted our brush loaded with the black, we want to rub off the black on our palette. So not quite so much black on your on your um, paintbrush. And again, holding it perpendicular and holding your finger as a brace. Really, we are focusing a lot on mirror images here. So you are just going to come through here, stroking some reflections of the mountains. So where you where mountain peak is, you know it's reflecting in the water. So it's going to be wide at the base and get smaller, farther down it goes. And take your reflection right up to the edge. Take your reflection right up to the your horizon line. So again, you put black on your brush, wipe most of it off on your on your palette. Okay, 
holding it vertical. Give yourself a little bit of a of a reflection here. The tallest mountain you have is going to have the deepest reflection going down in the water. So for those of you on the central and east coast, I know it's getting late for you. Um, we are down to our last thing. So once you've taken a little black on pretty much a dry brush and you've added a little bit of reflection of the mountain, right? We have a lot of reflections tonight. We have the Northern lights reflecting on the mountains. We have the northern lights reflecting in this in the water. We have the mountains now reflecting in the water. So ta-da! With our palette knife, we are going to finish our painting. <laughs> Go back to your colors that you used on your highlights on your mountains. You are going to finish up by taking your palette knife, turning it 45 degree angle, just taking the edge of your palette knife, mixing it through your green, your yellow, your blue. So here's the top of my palette knife, clean. Here's the bottom of my palette knife. See how the, the paint is on one edge? I'm right-handed, so it's on my, it's on the right edge of this. If I was left-handed, I would have my paint on the left edge of my palette knife, okay? And with this, using kind of a sawing motion, similar to how we painted this, the background of the sky, but just with the edge, I'm gonna come right along the horizon line. Because maybe the water is not all that still and maybe it's kind of, bouncing against the mountains and making little little waves. Yeah, a little bit of ice. So again, what, whenever you pick up the paint, you're just putting it on the on the the right edge of your palette knife and and you're not you're just sawing it back and forth. For those of you that joined us when we painted the winter cabin scene in January, it, it was like what we did in the water. So we just make a few little reflections there at the water's edge. So I'll hold mine up close so you can see along that horizon line right at the edge of the mountain where the mountain and the water are meeting, the horizon line there, adding just a few little tufts of lighter white or yellow. Here's my here's my palette. I'm just taking my 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 palette knife and I'm just bouncing it back and forth. My paint is pretty much dry too, so it's a little bit harder to work with. But I like the white. I like a little white on it. But there are no mistakes, so it's whatever you like. You know, this virtual painting is really, is really uh, making me, <laughs> something I am learning. I am not one to talk to myself. So it's been very hard for me to just talk. Yes, I'm like, my dad, I'm Italian. You need somebody in front of you so you can be talking and talking with your hands and, you know, a reaction and your voice goes up and down. And it's just kind of hard when it's me and Wendy across the room. and got lights in front of me so I can't even see her even yeah so of course last thing you sign your name and own it be grateful that you had tonight to to come and join us I'm so thankful you came and joined us but that we could get together tonight and in this remarkable technology that we have and you find your initials or your name and own your painting. Be grateful that you were able to do this. And I know from experience 
that it will look amazing to you in the morning. That's great. Yeah. I always take my painting.